The year was 1998, and we had just learned that the United Nations had received some disturbing video of what was being shown to children on Palestinian TV. Now, these programs would be the equivalent of our Sesame Street for children. And as you watch, think of what has just happened in the last few weeks with the suicide bombers. I wonder if in 1998 we had some actual footage of the young Palestinian girls who just became suicide bombers. Well, all of this came up in our discussion about terrorism and the new peace agreement that had just been signed. Listen. There are three secular columnists that uh, wrote in different uh, national publications right after the peace agreements were signed. And I was amazed to see what some of them said. Let me give you just one quote. Jeff Jacoby, a Globe columnist, wrote, For the fifth time in five years, a peace agreement has been signed, and he said, that brings us closer to war. Do you agree or disagree? Are we closer to war, or are we closer to peace in the Middle East? Current events back up everything he said. I hold here the peace agreement between uh, Israel and Jordan and the other peace agreements that are not really working. They're not being normalized as they're supposed to be. And in fact, after the Palestinian Oslo Accord was signed, in the last five years that it has been in force, there have been more Jewish people killed by terrorists than there were the 45 years previous to the signing of that particular agreement. So the peace agreements are not working. They are not guaranteeing peace in any way, shape, or form. Terrorism is running rampant in the Middle East. And uh, by the way, America was touched with terrorism in their embassies there in Africa. So we had a taste of it. But that is only going to increase. You look at the terrorists associated with Israel, Hezbollah, just in the southern portion of Lebanon, which are attacking the northern part of Israel. In the infrastructure of Israel itself, you have uh, Islamic Jihad, you have Hamas, and their stated goals. It's not a question, do we have to really find out what their philosophy is? Their stated goals is, we want to rid the world of the Jewish people, and we'll do that if we have to, in bits and pieces. Yasser Arafat, who makes one statement to us and another statement to his people, is basically calling for Islamic Jihad. He is calling for war. Uh, you know, the Palestinian covenant. Over 30 clauses in that covenant which calls for the demise of the Jewish people, the destruction of the state of Israel. Uh, they say they've changed it, they, uh, they play back and forth word games. The President of the United States has Arafat several years ago into the White House to announce they changed the covenant. And still, later on, the Y Plantation, for example, that was one of the sticking points. You've got to change the covenant. Well, if you change the covenant, it doesn't matter, because the Palestinian educational system is infiltrated with every bit of the philosophy in the covenant. And they're teaching the children. I'm starting, uh, start, talking about children starting at six years of age through high school. They're teaching them the philosophy that was contained within the Palestinian covenant. Uh, these people don't belong here. We belong here. I'd like to show you some very shocking video in this program that we secured from Palestinian television. Mortimer B. Zuckerman called my attention to this. He's the editor-in-chief of U.S. News and World Report. In his report, which was October 26, 1998, he wrote an editorial that, of all things that said, Arafat harbors terrorists and seeks Israel's destruction. Why trust him? He says, when the world is not paying attention, Arafat constantly talks of jihad. Now, what's jihad? That's holy war. His exhortations to the struggle against Israel can only inspire hatred among his people. How else are Palestinians and Israelis, Zuckerman says, to interpret the official Palestinian Authority television programs that are akin to Sesame Street, which feature a summer camp that trains children in the use of automatic weapons as they chant the glories of dying as suicidal warriors? That got my attention. Is Palestinian television showing its children how to become suicide bombers? We would like to show you some excerpts and just kind of give you the flavor of what's going on in the Middle East while the peace talks have actually been underway. I'd like you to listen. They call it the Children's Club. 
a program broadcast in prime time by Palestinian Authority TV. The images are familiar. The messages are not. What does this young girl want to be when she grows up? Five years after the Palestinians committed themselves to peace with Israel, this is what's on TV. With the media tightly controlled, television programming reflects policies set within the upper echelons of the Palestinian Authority. In this program, a suicide bomber becomes a role model. When school is out, summer camps are in, and the PLO Covenant comes alive in the daily schedule. These excerpts were also screened on official Palestinian TV. Yasser Arafat said several years ago, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this thing in stages. Whatever they will give us at the negotiating table, we'll take that and we'll use that then to launch our attack on the Jewish people. I say to you that we're on the verge of war. Now the Bible says all of that. I'm telling you what current events are in, as in reality. But God's word prophesied over 2,500 years ago, that's the situation we'd be in in the end times when all these nations, and all these people want to go against Israel and wipe them off the face of the earth. Take that little piece of property. When you think about less than one-tenth of one percent of the population of the world, less than five million Jewish people are surrounded, and they're one little nation, by 23 nations of over 350 million people. Why is it that they can't? coexist in a peaceful atmosphere. It's because God's word says their hearts and their minds are going to be deceitful and going to, with joyful hearts they're going to go forth to rid the world of the Jewish people. That's where we are right now. Now next week, what are the actions that the Bible predicts certain Arab countries will take in the future? I hope that you'll join me.